I'm your number one fan. We all go a little mad sometimes. Whatever you do. Excellent day for an exorcism. Bye, Bobby. Hello. Hello. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> We're actually filming this on Leap Day. We we are. This is we an, got extra an extra day. day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we're making the most of it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What better way to spend it than recording? I can't think of one, truly. Me neither. Me <laughs> neither. Um, are we doing news first? Yeah, let's kick it off. I have like a, a tiny little piece of news. Okay. Um, so Sydney Sweeney has an upcoming horror movie called Immaculate. I think it's a like supposed to be referencing the immaculate conception but um oh god yeah but like make it horror anyway okay. she got her grandma's cameos in the movie as like little nuns <laughs> both grandmas two grandmas yeah she flew them out and they got they got to be little nuns in the movie so oh that's actually so cute i know i thought it was kind of cute so if you I watch it that. i think it's coming out soon so you can watch it and know that if it shows little nuns, those are her grandmas. Aww. That's yeah. actually very sweet. Yeah, no, I liked that. Cute. Do you have, like, real horror news? Well, not really. It's it's oh. small, too. Um, we talked about Dakota Fanning last week. Yeah. Dakota Fanning has another horror movie coming out. Yeah, it's called Vicious, and it's directed by Brian Bertino. Who does Interesting. The Strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she's going to star as a young woman who's left a strange present by a late night visitor. And I won't give away anything else. That's just kind of like the premise that she's given this gift and she has to figure out what the fuck. Um, it's aired to release or it's scheduled to release on August 8th. Um, we got Bertino's attached to it. And then Atlas Entertainment, who's done American Hustle, Wonder Woman, like a lot of really big productions like blockbusters yeah blockbusters is also attached to it hmm. um so it could be really good that's interesting i like mm -hmm. this resurgence of dakota fanning yeah and she's in a lot of spooky stuff like she did the alienist that's kind of spooky the show yeah i feel like i feel like i haven't heard of about her in so long but it's just because i don't i haven't watched the stuff that she's been in because she's still been consistently acting yeah but i've heard really good things about the alienist i've just never you know, trying to get me to watch a new TV show is impossible. almost impossible. <laughs> yeah. The score of The Alienist is very good. So I can imagine the show is not it has terrible. has to be good. It has to be. It has to be. Why would they waste a good score on a terrible show? <laughs> anyway. So yeah, that's what you missed on Horror News. I like it. I have two minor corrections that I'd like to make before we get started. Okay. Um, one, I, we talked about Bates Motel and there's an actor in it who I did not know how to say his last name. And I said that I would say it correctly after I figured it out. Mm -hmm. So Max Tyriot, <laughs> you're welcome. I did Thank it. You. That's how he pronounces it. Although he admits that that's technically incorrect for the French pronunciation, but that's how his family says it. So that's how I'm going to say it. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's my one <laughs> correction. Sorry to that man. Um, and then my second one was, I don't know why I was so insistent that the remake of Psycho starring Vince Vaughn came out in 2007. It did not. It came out almost 10 years before that in 1998. So I don't know. I don't know. I was so sure. Yeah. You committed to 2007 with your whole body. I did. I did. I was probably thinking of the other fantastic film that came out super bad. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Easy to get the two confused. It, it, yeah. No, Superbad's a much better film than the remake of Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't doubt that. <laughs> That's, that wasn't even a joke. That's fact. <laughs> Psycho starring Vince Vaughn is worse than any other movie? Well... Not hard to believe. Let's not get crazy. There's some real stinkers out there. <laughs> 
Um, I'm bummed I didn't have time to watch the 1998 Psycho remake starring Vince Vaughn. Yeah. But I did watch the 1960 version. Should I tell you about it? Please. Okay. Um, in case you, it's been a while since you've seen it, or if you haven't seen it and you're listening to the podcast for some reason, Phoenix secretary, Marion Crane, played by Janet Leigh, Jamie Lee Curtis's mother, is on the lam after stealing $40,000 from her employer in order to run away with her boyfriend. She is overcome by exhaustion during a heavy rainstorm and is traveling on the back roads to avoid the police when she stops for the night at the Bates Motel. That's where she meets Norman Bates, a young man with an interest in taxidermy and a difficult relationship with his mother. And then horror shit happens. And then horror shit happens. (laughs) That's my favorite part. (laughs) Um, this was released in 1960s, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It had an $800,000 budget. It actually had an $806,947 budget, strangely enough. Um, it made just over $50 million. And in 1992, the movie was selected for preservation by the Library of Congress. Yeah, yeah. I think it's probably, the budget is probably so specific because it wasn't necessarily a budget i think he financed most of it so that's probably just about how much it costs to make it yeah because yeah he he i think he pretty much deferred his standard rate Mm -hmm. uh his salary in lieu of 60 percent of the movie's gross and paramount pictures was like that's fine because this is gonna be a flop obviously it was not Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of a sleeper hit and uh he ended up making 15 million off of this which adjusted for inflation is about 156 million a lot of money yeah yep get the royalties royalties (laughs) we've said it once (laughs) we'll say it a million times get those royalties uh yeah never never Take a film for a lump sum. Don't. Everybody who's listening who works on films, don't (laughs) do it. Stop. Get royalties. And hire us as your agents. Yeah. Let me be involved in some manner. Yeah. I don't care how. I don't have to be a manager. Just invite me to the screening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, like, walk through the set once. Yeah. Which, speaking of, we have we have actually walked through <laughs> the set of Psycho. Actually, yeah, literally. Well, technically, <laughs> the the motel was rebuilt. Yeah, on the Universal Studios back lots, and then the house was moved there. So it is the same house that's shown. Um, so we've walked by that. You can mm-hmm. walk like on the actual front steps of the rebuilt motel if you do like halloween horror nights at universal studios which we have done we did it. um but it's not the original you can kind of tell the one at universal isn't raised like the other one is so but still cool yeah it's very cool <laughs> um, fun do halloween horror nights yeah definitely highly recommend mm-hmm. um yeah they actually did a lot of um kind of creative set building and creative like cinematography tricks for this yeah. movie, which I'd love to talk about. <laughs> My favorite is how they filmed the shower head scene. Yes. It's so cute. Well, not cute exactly, but um, there's a scene where you're looking into the shower head, essentially. Um, Alfred Hitchcock had a six foot diameter shower head built for this scene. And the middle of the shower head didn't squirt out any water so that it would squirt around the camera that was underneath it. So when you're looking at that shower head, it's actually a massive shower head. Yeah. Which is kind of fun. That is fun. Yeah. I do think it's, I mean, we've talked about it many times that I'm a fan of practical effects rather than Mm -hmm. CGI. Not always. I think CGI can be really nice to enhance practical effects, but yeah. I think we've become so reliant on it now that it's just actors in front of green screens. And I don't find that interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's fun to learn about 
older movies when they didn't have that technology so they had to be creative they had to figure out these ways of shooting certain scenes like that like building yeah. a giant shower head yeah um not gonna lie i ebayed the shower head to see if it oh. was like floating around and i couldn't find it anywhere yeah but how fun would that be i can't imagine actual props from the movie psycho just floating around on ebay you never know i feel like they'd be snatched up or in some museum or something yeah probably but still yeah. you never know yeah you never know um we talked briefly in the predicting the plot of last episode that this movie is in black and white i thought that was because it had to be no it did not have to be <laughs> that was a choice by alfred Hitch hitchcock um it was because he thought it would be too gory in color yeah and it was also cheaper to do it true in black and white so uh -huh. two reasons yeah. But yeah, there were definitely a lot of um, things that didn't fly as much back then <laughs> as yeah. they do now. So you couldn't really, I think, is this the first movie that shows blood? Or one of the first <laughs> movies? Uh, no, but you know what it is, the first movie? The first movie to show a flushing toilet. A flushing <laughs> yes. toilet? That wasn't allowed. But Why? Was, I think because it was crass. It, they, I don't know. It was an FCC ruling that you weren't allowed to show toilets flushing. Things were a lot stricter back then. And so basically they, they tried to make these things integral to the plot mm -hmm. so that they couldn't cut it. And that's why she's flushing the money because that has to be in there for the plot, right? Um, yeah. Well, she didn't flush the money. She flushed the re the note. Oh, sorry, yeah, the right? note. yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, the paper down the toilet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it, they did things like that to kind of push the boundaries and get away with things that you weren't allowed to get away with until this movie. Yeah, I could count on one hand. I can't even think of a movie where the a toilet is flushing. Like I, the I only seriously... one that immediately comes to mind is. What is it, Dumb and Dumber? He's <laughs> like, there's shit seen... everywhere. <laughs> oh no! I think I think they try to flush a toilet in that, but I could be wrong. But by then it was fine; you could do it. <laughs> the only movie I can think of is actually entirely about flushing toilets. It's called Flushed Away. It's the, <laughs> the oh claymation gosh. movie <laughs> with the guy. Yeah. Well, what? Well, the, like, rat guy who everybody says, like, that every bisexual girl's dated a guy that looks like that. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, um, that movie is literally the yeah. only one I could think of. Apparently Dumb and Dumber also. But it's just, it's just it, funny to imagine that that was, at one point, literally not even allowed. Not allowed. Yeah. And now we have movies with... 900 fucks in them 900 fucks no flushing a toilet to 900 fucks yeah look at how far we've come i know literally society thank you um but this is this is the catalyst this yeah. is the catalyst for us being more crass in movies thank you psycho thank you sir alfred hitchcock sure anyway what were we talking um, about blood well, I was just trying to remember. I think it was one of the first movies that showed blood. It wasn't actually blood. I think everybody kind of knows by now that it was chocolate syrup. But chocolate fun syrup. fact, if you didn't know, that's what they used because it looked better in the black and white. Mm -hmm. um, and it was still so tame. Yeah. Oh, very. Like, there was not a lot of chocolate. Like, what did they use? One bottle of chocolate syrup for the entire movie? Well, and they had they they cut back from the, this is based on a novel um, by Robert Bach, I think, or Botch. I don't know how to say his last name. Tune in next week for another Corrections Corner where we're casting. One day, <laughs> I will figure out how to say every name ever. 
Um, <laughs> Block, I think. Anyways, it was written by him. And in the novel, he beheads her afterwards. So it was actually <laughs> tamed down. He like desecrates her body. Um, so they tamed that down a lot based on the book. But I know they also made a lot of change. Like Marion Crane was not a prominent character in the book. Um, Norman Bates was middle-aged and unattractive and much creepier and unlikable than he is in the movie. Not that he's super likable, but he is attractive. <laughs> and he's not unlikable. Yeah, you, I think you have a little bit more sympathy. He's got that boyish charm. Yeah. He do. Yeah. I'll be honest, I went down a rabbit hole. Because <laughs> I started reading about the movie to prep for the episode. And I had known two things about Anthony Perkins before today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One was that he played Norman Bates in Psycho. And okay. two was that his son is Oz Perkins, who is also an actor and director. Uh, of course. He has done a few horror movies, which we'll watch. One is actually upcoming this year called Long Legs, and it stars Nick Cage. Oh, okay. Um, but you would probably know him <laughs> from the movie Legally Blonde. <laughs> he plays... David, which is one of Elle Woods' friends, he's the dorky one that she pretends she had an amazing night in the hot tub with to get him a date. Ah, That is Anthony Perkins' son, Oz. So, that was the only things I knew. And then I started researching, I started reading about his life, and it there, it's kind of tragic. He's got some, like, sad things. He basically, I think it's assumed he was... A homosexual but we don't i mean he dated men um and then he started seeing a therapist her name's mildred newman she's kind of notorious for having celebrity clients but also her belief that you could change your sexuality hmm. um i think through her he decided to go to conversion therapy um, and one of his friends is Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. He has described Mildred Newman as completely unethical and a danger to humanity. So oh that my was God. his therapist at the time. Jesus. Um, so yeah, I think he, he felt like he had to change. Um, he did end up marrying a woman. They had two children. Um, and then he died pretty young. He was only 60. Oh. And he died to AIDS-related pneumonia. And then a oh, side man. note, his wife died about nine years later because she was in the plane that hit the North Tower on 9-11. Holy yeah. shit. I, my mouth was like dropped the entire time I was reading all about him and his life and the people in his life. Oh my God. It's like the glee curse, but worse. Just absolutely tragic Everything. that's terrible i know Oof. yeah I sorry that secret. was a lot <laughs> yeah let me tell you a secret okay i've never seen lately blonde what the fuck are you saying to me right now <laughs> i mean i've seen most of it on tiktok are you you're not lying to me i've never seen lately blonde the reese witherspoon movie where she goes to be Why? alive and she's dressing in pink all the time. Why? I don't know. I, I, cause I, I'm more of a miscongeniality girl. No, you're not. You're a legally blonde girl. What? Do you you mean? would love that movie. Why? It's so good, Katie. Okay, I believe you. I'll no, you're not gonna believe me. You're gonna watch it, and then okay, you're gonna I'll be like, it. "Holy shit! I'm such an idiot for." What's wrong with you? What do you mean? I, I haven't had time. You've had 30 fucking <laughs> years. <laughs> okay, I'll watch it eventually. Oh, I'm shaking. I'm shaking. <laughs> uh, I, t I didn't realize it was that big of a priority. That is by far the thing I hate the most about you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh 
my god. Well. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what to say. Sorry, and then you're watching it tonight. <laughs> okay. God. <sighs> Cut the podcast, we're done. <laughs> oh my god, I have no right to be here. That's it, no. Hmm. Okay. We have to move on, otherwise I'll talk about it for another hour and a half. Okay, all right. Um, well, let's circle back to the black and white thing, um, just for a second. Um, Alfred Hitchcock also said he wondered if so many bad and inexpensively made black and white B-movies did so well at the box office, then why couldn't... <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Let me, let me, start, let me just start that over <laughs> He famously said. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Okay, wait, hold on. I, I don't understand. I know what I'm trying to say, but I don't know what I yeah, wrote. Yeah, yeah. I believe in you. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay. Um, he also wondered if so many bad, inexpensively made black and white like B movies did so well at the box office, what would happen if like a really good, inexpensively made black and white movie came out at the box office? So that was kind of his goal with releasing this movie it did well it did well he made his point yeah i guess can i be honest i don't really like alfred hitchcock guy seemed like a fucking dick yeah he he seems a little full of himself i mean but like he did another horror movie called the birds we'll watch it eventually but i don't know about the birds Okay, well, the star of that, you don't know Legally Blonde. So let's I start know there. Legally Blonde. I just haven't seen it. Anyways, Christ. Tippi Hedren was the star of that. Yeah, Tippi Hedren. Yeah, got it. That's What's-Her-Face's mom. Correct. What's-Her-Face. She mm-hmm. claimed that he sexually assaulted her while they were filming that. Shit. Also, she... Uh, she says that she was told that the final scene where, like, birds are attacking her, they were going to be mechanical birds. And then mm-hmm. the day that they were filming, they were like, surprise, they're real birds. And just, like, she actually just got attacked by birds. So that's not okay. Um, so, yeah, he just kind of seemed like a dick. And apparently this entire t- the whole time that they were filming, he would refer to Anthony Perkins as Master Bates. Which is kind of funny, <laughs> but probably pretty mean. In the 60s. I mean, anywhere. I don't think it's appropriate for, like, your coworker or boss to be calling you master. <laughs> don't. We're taking this seriously. I mean, okay, no, you're right. He You're just had right. a habit of harassing and not being kind to actors. Or professional. Yeah. So he seems like kind of a dick. Oh, well. And that's my opinion. That's fair. Thank you. Sounds like you're not the only one with that opinion, so. No. Mm. Well. I do like the thing that he does where he puts himself in his movie, though. Like, just as a little... Cameo. Like cameos. Yeah. Which yeah. I have on YouTube watched a video of all of his cameos in his movies. Okay. Like the one of him sitting in the car and, you know. He did it really early in this film because he didn't want people to be distracted looking for it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just get in, get it over with, and then focus on the movie. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Because I was definitely waiting for him to show up. <laughs> Fair. Pretty early on. That's like the only thing I know about his movies is that he's in them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're spooky. Not always. This is his first horror movie. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Birds didn't come out before this? No. Birds is in black and white too. Yeah. Hmm. A choice. Um It is. It's it's a choice. Hmm. Um, also, apparently, before this movie came out, theaters used to just play movies on a loop, and then people mm-hmm. could come in and out as they pleased. 
so they could come in halfway through, watch the end of the movie, and then wait for it to start over and then watch the beginning. No, thank you. That was commonplace. No way. Until this movie. So he, oh. Hitchcock was super secretive about the plot. He didn't want anyone to know. Also, when he bought, he personally bought the rights to the book and then bought as many copies as he could because he didn't want people to read it because he didn't want them to know the end. <laughs> <gasps> so he, he even like wouldn't tell the cast and crew what the script was until like days that they were filming. Mm -hmm. Super secretive. But basically he made the owners of the movie theater sign a contract saying that they would not let anyone come in midway through. You had to be there at the start, sit through it, and then you could leave. You had to wait until the next showing if you got there late. And that basically started the process of mandatory seating times in theaters. Wow. This movie did that. Cool. Pretty crazy. I can't imagine just showing up and watching the end of a movie <laughs> and then the beginning of it. That couldn't wild. be me. No, no way. So I am happy that this changed that. Yeah. I agree. That's yeah. um, fucking serial killer behavior to walk in the middle of a movie and watch it and then watch the beginning of it. That's absolutely diabolical. Insane. Yeah. So this must have been like one of the first big plot twists in cinema. I mean, it was a great groundbreaking film. I don't know how many movies had plot twists before this. I'm sure it was probably one of the most effective if yeah. people were just allowed to willy nilly walk in whenever they wanted. Mm hmm. But yeah. Crazy. <laughs> um, iconic. Yeah. And this was, I mean, Scream definitely took a note from this movie by promoting, I mean, they promoted it as if Janet Leigh was the star and she was the main character. And then she dies, which is what Scream did with Drew Barrymore. So that's like, oh, that's the only thing that is sad about getting into horror movies later in life. Like there's not a person alive who's watching Psycho today and doesn't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, we just can never get that experience. Like, mm. I knew that she was going to die in the shower because yeah. everybody knows that now. So my first time watching this was not obviously as a fact, and it's never going to be, but mm -hmm. man, to watch this or scream for the first time thinking, can't wait to watch this new Drew Barrymore movie. <laughs> and then she just dies immediately. Oh, I'd be losing my mind. Yeah. Maybe I'll show it to my four-year-old. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> sure. But it would be effective on her. You should. <laughs> Go get her. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> um, no, that is one of the things I was going to say it, kind of later on when we're rating the movie is that, like, the only thing I would have known, had I not watched Bates Motel, mm -hmm. the only thing I would have known is that Janet Leigh gets killed off pretty, or gets killed off. Yeah. I didn't realize how soon it would be. And that was one thing that really threw me off was that she was killed off so early. I was like, whoa, isn't this movie about her? Like, isn't this movie <laughs> what made her famous? Like, what the hell? Um, so, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't, she was definitely famous before this movie, but it, it's definitely her most iconic role. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it caused her and Anthony Perkins to be typecasted after it came out. But they both yeah. said that they would do it again, even though it kind of not ruined their careers afterwards, but definitely kind of impacted it. Yeah. But they said it was worth it. Yeah. Um, I, I, up until the very last scene... Anthony Perkins almost for me didn't fit the character. Like oh. I'm not complaining about his acting at all. His acting was perfect, but he was not who I would have like seen and then cast for this role. You know what I mean? He just didn't okay. like look the part. He looked very, you know, put together, tidy, like I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but to me he did not look the part. 
And the fact that he still acted the part so perfectly is a testament to how great of an actor he is. You would have cast Vince Vaughn. <laughs> Obviously. Wouldn't we all? <laughs> no, I guess... Yeah, that, that's interesting, because I... I think because this movie's so iconic, I could not see anybody but him in the role. So he's exactly who I think of of fitting the role, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's an interesting perspective, because I would have never thought that. Yeah, I mean, I... I have never seen him ever that I know of. Yeah. I would not have been able to tell you what he looked like before going to this movie. I've never seen, like the only thing, the only thing I've ever seen of this movie actually is the pictures of like the shower scene, you know? Okay. Um, obviously I knew what was going to happen, but, um, but yeah, no, I, when we got to the motel and he's like, yeah, Norman Bates or whatever, like, got to the Bates Hotel and it's, like, inferred that that's him. I was like, oh, my God, that, first of all, does kind of look like Freddie Highmore. <laughs> they kind of look alike. Yeah. But Freddie Highmore is a little bit more, like, creepy alien looking, <laughs> you know? <laughs> in a good way, not in a bad way. That's not that's not an insult or anything. Um, I'm into aliens just as much as the next person. But um, maybe more, probably stop but yeah no i i just like you don't you don't look at him and think murderer i do it's because he played the part so well unassuming white man murderer <laughs> <laughs> always <sighs> i have a fun fact that i think you'd like i bet i know what it is Tell it to me. Walt Disney. Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me, sorry. <laughs> I'll tell everybody listening since you okay, already know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walt Disney refused to allow Hitchcock to film at Disneyland because Hitchcock made what Disney referred to as that disgusting movie psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, if if Walt Disney could see the horror movies that are being put out now, oh my god. He'd die again. Good reason. No. <laughs> oh! Watch out! I won't. Um, Some people say he's not even dead. <sighs> Some people say he's in cryogenic sleep. Some people believe a lot of things. My, one know. of my favorite conspiracy theories, though, is that they made the movie Frozen so that when people Googled Disney Frozen, the, those search results would show the movie instead of results about Walt Disney being frozen. Yeah. I think that's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, another fun fact about just kind of movies in the 60s in general. Mm -hmm. Psycho had a six minute and 30 second long trailer. That's a short film. It is a short film, literally. <laughs> I couldn't find it easily, but I would not sit through a six minute long trailer. No. And where were they watching this trailer? Did they have TVs in the 60s? Yeah, yeah, they did because the moon landing. But, like, when did they play them? They didn't play them before movies. You just said they were playing movies on repeat. So, what, uh, what did they just play them between shows? I had to wait six and a half minutes while I was watching my show. To, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where were they watching these trailers? They weren't going on YouTube. I don't know. I was not alive. I don't Fun even, like, facts. I know anybody alive. I was not alive in the 60s. <laughs> Oh, I guess my grandparents. Oh, my mom was born in 1960. Would she remember? Call her up. No, she was born in 1960s. So. Yeah, but would she remember about those things, like, in the 60s? Probably not. She was an infant. Well, I mean, she was five in 1965 and ten in 1970, so maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'll ask. Thank you. Appreciate that. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is currently the oldest movie to have an R rating. Really? Yes, because it was retroactively given to it. <laughs> oh. The MPAA, the rating system wasn't established when it came out. Oh. So it was established in 68. And so they went back and re-rated some older movies. Mm -hmm. And this one got an R. So I think, date-wise, it's the oldest. It's not the first, but it was the oldest that came out, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, which is weird because there are some PG-13 movies nowadays that far out violence, out content, this movie. So it feels PG-13 to me personally. It feels PG to me. Well, I don't know. I consider like a PG movie something that you could take a four-year-old to. With parental guidance. Yeah. PG. <laughs> but I don't... <laughs> I think there's still some content in this that is a little mature. Yeah, I guess the body. And the toilet flushing. God, unheard of in movies. That is so obscene to me. Yeah, That right. that was allowed. Petition to ban toilet flushing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, do you want to know my favorite fun fact about this movie? Yes. My name is in it. <laughs> what? Mr. Cassidy is a character in the movie. Oh. <laughs> Missed that completely. You didn't watch it. <laughs> I did! I did! <laughs> Who is Mr. Cassidy? He's at the beginning. I is he the... He works there. Is he, like, the $40,000 guy? I think so. The drunk guy? I don't remember. If I'm being honest, I played this while I was working on another thing and I just kind of like peeked up every once in a while, you know? Um, mm. But my name's in it. And that doesn't okay. happen a lot for me. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Cute. Yeah. But what's also fun is that I'm pretty sure the only movies that I know of personally, besides Butch Cassidy movies, because that doesn't count. Uh, yeah. In my opinion. <laughs> The only other movies I can think of that had my name in it are also horror movies, so that's kind of fun. But Cute. also that might just be because I watch more horror movies. That's all you watch. Genre. Yeah. No, I watch other movies. You don't watch other movies. Legally Blonde. Oh, God. What the? <clears throat> it's the one movie. It's the movie. That's the problem. Nobody has ever said, oh, you have to drop everything that you're doing and watch Legally Blonde, or else I would have by now. Because everyone assumes you have. Why would they assume that? Because everyone knows that that is a movie you should watch. Isn't it a rom-com? You don't even like rom-coms. First of all, I love rom-coms. Second of all, no, it's not a rom-com. It is a female empowerment movie. It is... We're done. <laughs> We're not talking about this anymore. Oh my God. I'm going to make freaking lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to watch Legally Blonde later, I guess. Yeah, you are. Okay. God. Okay, I have one other fun fact, and then we can You make me fun. watch, like, three movies a week. Mm -hmm. Add another one. Oh, I'm Katie, and I'm sad I have to watch good movies all the time. <laughs> so he makes me. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, last fun fact for okay. me, and then we can move on. Okay. After this movie's release, Hitchcock got an angry letter from a father of a girl who had refused to take a bath after she saw a Diabolique, which is a French horror movie. Mm -hmm. And after seeing this movie, she now was refusing to take showers. Oh, no. <laughs> and so Hitchcock sent him a note back that said, send her to the dry cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny, despite That's him. Pretty funny. Being kind of a terrible person, that was yeah. Funny. He was probably serious, but that is pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder if the guy kept that letter. I would. I would. <laughs> um, I'll do one more, and then we can move on to ratings. Okay. Um, 
so the score makes the movie. <laughs> I was surprised you hadn't talked about the score yet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely iconic score. Alfred Hitchcock knew it too. He doubled Bernard Herman's salary to a whopping $35,000. Um, hey. Because he knew that it was so iconic. He was so thrilled with it. Um, he said that 33% of the effect of Psycho was due to the music, which I have always said that the score makes the movie. Here's Alfred Hitchcock, albeit an asshole, agreeing with me. Um, there's only stringed instruments throughout the entire score, which is also like, I just got out of seeing Dune 2. And what was cool about that score was that it was so diverse. He uses instruments from all over the place. Um, and like uses instruments to like make noises that they shouldn't be making. Like that's cool, but it's also very cool to be able to pull off such an iconic score with just one kind of instrument, like one subset of instrument. Very cool. Uh, but anyway, it inspired Jaws, which is another absolutely iconic score. So, I mean, what more can I say? It's score makes the movie. You heard it here first. And you'll hear it here again. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. Well, overall, just kidding. Uh, how scary do you think it was? <laughs> um, oh, one. Yeah. We've come a long way since this movie was made. Mm -hmm. um, it's not scary. No, what about you? Not even a little bit. No, it's not scary at all. One. Yeah. yeah. One. Uh, how sexy did you think it was? I didn't. Oh, okay. I give it a one. Yeah. It's too old. Reminds me of my grandma. Oh, okay. No, in a cute way. Yeah. Well. You? I give it a 1.5. Oh. I'm not going to not sit here and pretend like Anthony Perkins isn't attractive in this. He is. But like grandpa. He was like in his 20s when he did this movie. Yeah, but it's in black and white. So it's like, it feels like he's your grandpa. You know, there's movies that have come out in the past 10 years that have been black and white. It's a style choice, Katie. Literally, I just saw one of them today. There you go. And I wouldn't have sex with any of them either. You wouldn't have sex with anybody in the Dune 2 cast? Not in the black and white parts! Well, I haven't seen it, but... I know Sunday is in it, so... She's not in the black and white parts. <laughs> and thank God she's not. Well, I'll never know, because I'm not going to see Dune 2. Um... How fucked up did you think it was? I gave it a 1.5. Okay. Only because of the kind of social aspect. I think, again, we've come a long way since this movie was made. So, yes, this was kind of one of the first movies that did the whole mental illness makes you a murderer type of thing. Um, yeah. But I'm not a fan of that trope. Never have been. And, uh... Mentally ill people are more likely to be a danger to themselves than others. What about you? Well, see, I didn't think of it as mental illness makes you a murderer. It, to me, it felt more like a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's, but I, I think my issue with the trope is it's so often, and obviously when this came out, it wasn't often used. That wasn't right. You know. But now it's become such a trope of, Oh, this person's a murderer. Well, they have a mental illness. It's it's used to kind of explain away why they're dangerous. Yeah. And that's to me not an appropriate stereotype to make. Yeah, which totally agree with you that that should not be the reasoning behind someone being a murderer. But also, did, did they really peg it on to like a specific diagnosis? Yeah, they basically, in the ending monologue, said that he had DID. 
basically. Um, okay. Which I don't, I know the, the terminology for that has changed a little bit in the past year. So I hope that that's the current one that's being used, but essentially dissociative identity disorder where okay. he was his mother when he was doing yeah. the murders and then him. Oh. Rate it for fuck up. Oh yeah. Uh, one. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't bother me at all. That's fair. What about overall? Um, okay, hard to say because it's an old movie, it's in black and white, but I can definitely appreciate all of that. It's an iconic film, just the the impact that it has had on the film industry, on society, on media is incredible. So I have to give credit where it's due, and I gave it a four. Okay. It's kind of funny that you said that, because I also was going back and forth when I was talking about my rating, because I think it gets tricky, right? If if I'm evaluating this as a critic, Mm -hmm. it is one of the first of its kind. It's incredibly influential. It was extremely well executed. Again, its impact is unbelievable. Mm Mm-hmm. So critically, I would give it a five out of five. Yeah, that's fair. If we are rating it based on how much I personally enjoy it, and if I'm going to, like, watch it on the weekends (laughs) type of thing, it's like a four out of five. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah, it's kind of like, it's it's that distinction of best versus favorites, right? Where it's, Mm -hmm. it's not my favorite movie. But is it one of the best movies? Yes. Yeah. I can watch Spice World and know critically that movie is horrendous. I fucking love it, though, and I'll watch it anytime (laughs) someone asks. (laughs) There's that's That's kind of what I did, though, is I split the difference. Like, yeah. Did I like the movie? Not especially. It didn't do anything, like, really interesting that I didn't know was already coming. But at the time, that was iconic. So for me, it was, it's more like a three, but like just the impact that his had yeah, is a five. So that's where I got the four from. It is interesting when you watch this movie after you've watched a bunch of horror movies. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, this is so full of tropes. But it wasn't at the time. It yeah, it was not. It made the tropes. So. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but the real question is, would you survive? Um, well, no. Yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, Yeah. because I'm not stealing 40K, which is more like $800,000 or $400,000 in today's (laughs) money. I'm not stealing that much. A little less than that. A little, slightly less than $400,000 is where the off is. Yeah. Um, So I'm not on the run. Yeah. Um, I know better than to get into the hotel industry, so I'm not Norman. Great. Or his mom. Mm Mm-hmm. So honestly, I think I'd be a Knox got free. Yeah. For once. I do live in Phoenix, though. Yeah. Because that's the thing. I mean, are you even staying at the hotel? Are you investigating a crime? What's your role in the situation, Katie? Yeah, I don't I don't think I have one. <laughs> I am in no way affiliated with this movie. <laughs> I mean, I think the rules are that you have to put yourself in the situation. Okay, yeah. So if I'm if I'm Janet Leigh, I'm not stealing the money. I'm not going on the run. Okay. I'm figuring it out. Great. There At you home. go. At home. Yeah. Staying in Phoenix. Yeah. Yep. Um, sorry, Dylan, but I would not go. I would not do that for you. Great. Yeah. Well, yeah. What about you? I think so. Yeah. Because I agree. I'm not going to steal $400,000. No, no way. No. And, and yeah, so I'm not going on the run and, 
And even if I was investigating someone's death or someone's disappearance, I guess, mm -hmm. I'm not going into a creepy old house by myself. I'm staying with the person I came with. I'm not separating like they, the, the two at the end did, you know, mm -hmm. Lila and Sam, I think. Yeah. I'm not separating. Um, yeah, so. Fair. I, think I'm all, I think I'm all right. I also think I could take Norman. He's pretty lanky. Yeah. So. Um, which reminds me of one thing I was going to bring up. Um, we don't see a lot of horror movies, or I haven't seen a lot of horror movies. You probably have. Where the original protagonist is also kind of like the bad guy. Like she was originally, oh. like at the beginning of the movie, she was portrayed, I'm talking about Janelle's character. On the run. But, well, no, she was portrayed as like this, you know, put together. She's a secretary. She's been at the same job for 10 years. And then she steals $40,000. Yeah. That's a lot of money in a lot of money. 1960. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then she's kind of on the run and lying to the police and... We don't see that a lot. It was just fresh. Yeah. It was that was fun and fresh for me. That yeah, that we were following someone who was not like a little trying to get away gray. from the bad guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just fun, and interesting little tidbit. I like it. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so we both lived. We both lived. Excellent. Great. Um, next week, mm -hmm. we're talking about a newer movie that's out. It's called Stop Motion. <gasps> Do you want to predict the plot? No, I think you should. Okay. <laughs> 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 I have seen the trailer. Oh, I haven't even seen the trailer. So I have some knowledge. Oh. Um, so I think it's about a woman who's making a stop motion film. Mm -hmm. And then a little girl is like, this is boring. Stop. I don't know who the little girl is. <laughs> I don't think it was said in the trailer. Probably like her niece. It's her niece. So okay. her niece comes in and sees, you know, the movie and she's like, this is really boring. And she's like, well, you know, it's a work in progress. And so the little girl's like, oh, you should make it about the Ash Man. I think she says Ash Man. Ashman. I don't know who that is, but they say it in the trailer. And he's this like creepy dude, right? And so you should make it about him. And so she starts making the movie about Ashman. It's starting to sound like Assman. Assman. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so she starts making the movie about that. But then I think like the worlds kind of start colliding a bit and we start seeing these characters come to life in the real world. And so I think the Ashman starts like coming at her. But I've also, it was described as Lynchian. So I'm assuming that it's kind of going to be a little bit surreal. And we're not going to get a lot of clarity on if this is actually happening or her imagining it or whatever. But I think it starts to impact her. She pushes someone down the stairs. So I think she starts acting out. <laughs> this is all what I'm getting from the trailer. Um... And so I think it's going to be very up for interpretation by the end. I don't think we're going to get like a clear, because it's going to be a little surrealist if they're calling it Lynchian. Let's be real. Okay. That's it. That's all I have. I love it. Sounds great. Yeah. Do you know who David Lynch is? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lynchian is a word to describe based on the director, David Lynch. Okay. He does some surrealist movies. He did Twin Peaks. He did Eraserhead. And you're going to love this. He did the original Dune. <laughs> oh, did he really? <laughs> I think he directed the one that came out. Like, oh, God. Was it the, was it the Starring eight? Sting? Not Sting. Yeah, Sting. I think so. David Lynch. Oh, yeah, his name does sound familiar. Dune, 1984. Yeah, but I think the best example is Eraserhead. Like, that is very 
what people think of when they think of Lynchian, which it's very conceptual, very surrealist. Like Bo is afraid. Metaphor driven. Yeah. Like, yeah. We'll watch Eraserhead eventually. Is it horror? Yeah. Cute. It's in black okay. and white too. Great. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Sorry, I dropped my chapstick. It was open. <laughs> that was scarier than all of Psycho. <laughs> yeah. Not hard. Not a really high bar there. For its time, I'm sure it was terrifying, but. <laughs> chapstick in my mouth now. Disgusting. Yeah. Anyway. Get yourself together. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my God. Well. All right. That's it. That's all we have. I mean, there's like, we could talk for about three more hours about all the fun facts about Psycho, but we're not going to do that. So if you want more, just go look it up. You can find treasure Uh, troves of information on that movie. So IMDb alone has plenty. Oh, you could scroll for hours. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, bye. (laughs) Uh, shoot.